Good morning and welcome back to Regrets It, Brexit England, Northern Ireland and Eastern Europe and this is a special report from Easter 1930s England. Jewish people are being put into gas chambers by Adolf Hitler, the world's most evil person the world has ever seen. They have asked the British people for a sanctuary and the British people have said we are full up. They can't come here. We move forward to Enoch Powell has just made his speech. The rivers of blood and it has gone down so well in the chamber just as well as it would do in 2022. Let's move forward a few decades to Margaret Thatcher who has offered my parents £500 to go back to where the fuck you come from. All you black and brown people can get the hell out of here and we'll give you £500 to do it. And then we move forward to David Cameron and Boris Johnson who brought us Brexit. This reporter from the 1930s brought back in 2022 still believes that England is a cesspit of racism. Quite a disgusting place. Wow. That guy's got real issues. <laughs> and also, welcome back to By Any Means Necessary. Thank you so much for all your messages sent me here. Special thanks here to everybody who signed up to my channel. I feel so blessed with so much people that have signed up. So thank you so much for that. I'll go through all your messages. I'll answer as many as I can. But I will like all your messages for definite. So we've had another um, shooting in America. Uh, uh, the police have murdered another black man um, face down on the floor. He's been shot in the back of the head. It seems that, um, he, that he was stopped by the police and there was a, you know, it ended up where there was a, there was a struggle and he was fighting the police officer for his taser or something like that. Um, and then obviously he's on the floor and, and somehow he's been shot in the back of the head by these, by these police officers. So obviously, uh, you know, Black Lives Matter are out in full and, and all these type of things. So there's, so there's some demonstrations going on in, in, I believe it was in Michigan where this incident happened but you, you know uh, you know a lot of people are going to say well why was he fighting the police officer for his taser what was he what was going on there what, what was he fighting with the police officer for right now I've, i'm going to try and explain to you yeah, as a as a black man what it's like for us you can have a criminal right our interaction with a criminal can be the same as an interaction with a police officer so a criminal with a gun, for us, can be a police officer. Because, you know, you, you know you can read body language and you can tell when someone's got like a murderous intention. So you know to yourself, if one thing happens here, there's, you know, there's a, there's a real possibility that this guy is going to kill me. So immediately, right, you're, you know, you're going to be in like, you know, the only way out yeah, is to try and fight for your life. Because, I mean, if someone, you know, if, if, if a burglar comes into your house, right, you know, are you going to be in the wardrobe, right, or are you going to be, you know, in your boxer shorts fighting with the burglar? You know, that, that you know, so, so that's the position that, that we are in with every interaction that we have with police officers. Because, like, let me tell you, yeah, I've had police interactions with police officers right and I can see that they want to do me some serious harm you can just see it right and, you know I've been stopped over a thousand times in my life right so and I've had good beating I've had good beatings from the police as well so you know so believe me I know exactly what I'm talking about in this in this situation and you know I know that we're, we're, we're probably at a stage now where you know where, where black guys you know, an, an interaction with the police you know that this could be your last few minutes on on the on this earth because these police officers have intentions right of doing you serious harm you see probably as a as a white person right you would never you wouldn't under, you 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 can't understand what i'm saying here right unless you're a criminal if you're if you're a criminal then you can understand because black people are instantly treated as criminals so white like like you know white people who are harassed by the police the police already know that they're criminals so that's why they're harassing them so 
that effect is just straight on us. That's what they do to us straight away. They just instantly treat us like criminals. So, so that's so that's the difference in the way how we're policed. Because you know, you know, I've got white friends who have never ever been stopped by the police. You know, unless they're with me. <laughs> and then they, you know, and then they, and then they're like, "What the hell was all that about?" Right? I've had that on numerous occasions where I've been with, with with one of my white friends, and we've been stopped, and they're like, they're just really shocked on you know on the stop in the first place, right? And then you know you find that they will go on about it for for weeks and for you know, for months for years after that for that for that one interaction that they've had. Right. Because they'll, you know, and every time you see them, they'll they'll be speaking. Oh, I can't believe that happens to us. I can't believe I can't believe they treat you like, you know, because because it's the first time that it's happened to them. It's, it's never happened to them before, right? So don't just look at this and say, well, why was he like, you know, trying to grab hold of the police officer's taser? Because the, you know, there's always going to be a lot more to it than that. And you know, if if you think that you're in a fight for your life then you know you're going to try and do everything to try and save your life if you meet up with like a blue jean cop and you you know to yourself you're like these you know these guys can kill you and they can get away with it right? you know just look on how much occasions yet yeah, in america where you've had one black man on the floor and you've had five or six police officers on top of them right and they say oh well he went for the gun that's why we shot him in the back while he was on the floor and killed him and say, well, and then, because they know to themselves, you know, even if they go to court, there's a good chance that they can get, yeah, 12 of their peers to, to find them not guilty, right? Because what they're saying is, well, that one black man that was on the floor, he's got the strength of six of us, or five or six of four, five or six of us. He's got that strength. So that's why we was in fear of our life and, you know, of him grabbing hold of, of our weapon. So that's why we had to shoot him while he was on the floor. And a jury in America would be like, hmm, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, we agree with that. And you say, well, because, I mean, that's impossible to agree with. If you've got four, if you've got four people on top of you, right, and then they shoot you dead and, say, and then say, well, they was in fear of their lives. I mean, what is that saying about them? They're saying, well, we are such a weak and inferior race of people that four of us, right, holding down one black man, but we still have to shoot them dead because, you know, we're in fear that that black man could have got hold of our gun and killed us. So all of those jury members that have found those police officers not guilty on, in, the, in some of these cases right, are saying, well, yes, we are so inferior to you that all of those police officers could not control that one black man without murdering him. I mean, that, <laughs> I mean, if, I don't know, I don't know if, I don't know if you, um, if you think that that's a way of putting it, but that is sort of the way how it seems that these things happen. And you know, these people are brought up to believe that black people have a super strength and that's why they have to be so aggressive when they, you know, that's why they have to have their gun drawn out when they make a simple cast, you know, um, traffic stop, they have to have their guns drawn. You have to say, well, why, what, why is that? Why do you need to have your guns drawn when you're making a simple traffic stop? But they do all the time. So, you know, it's a very, very sad situation, but that is what's happening in America. We're still in that situation where an interaction with a criminal can be just the same as an interaction with a police officer when you look like I do. Britain is looking at absolute travel chaos over this Easter. So, and you know, it's been described as the worst ever Easter chaos. And we just heard those words about so many things. Worst ever NHS numbers. Worst ever inflation. Worst ever Tra export trade you know do you know i think i'm one of the people in this country yeah, who boris johnson has not disappointed because you know when when boris johnson was first like you know said to be that they, they want to make him um he, he might be prime minister one day i just took it as a joke believe me because you know i knew that if boris johnson was to ever get into power he, he would probably bankrupt the country he'd probably like it, it just destroy the economy 
I mean, he's, he's, he's straight true to form for me because that's exactly what he's done. You know, the, the first time when he tried, yeah, and Michael Gove stopped him, Michael Gove, yeah, is a, is, you know, he's a, uh, um, a cocaine taking fiend, right? Who's just a hypocrite, right? But he is a very meticulous man. And Michael Gove knew, and he said it straight, Boris Johnson would be a complete disaster. Michael Gove said it straight. He, you know, he said, when he, when he stepped in and made sure Boris Johnson couldn't do it, because he knew exactly what Boris Johnson would do to, to, to Britain. And I guarantee you, yeah, when Michael Gove is out of politics and he writes it and he writes his memoirs, this is exactly what's going to be in it. He, he would say that, you know what, I knew that Boris Johnson would be a total and utter disaster, a catastrophe for this country. And he would do over a hundred years worth of damage to this country right Boris Johnson's done more damage than Oliver Cromwell and Oliver Cromwell he he had a king's head cut off and Boris Johnson's done more damage than than any than any person has ever done to this country and we've had wars right and Boris Johnson has just destroyed everything right and that's why this Easter the travel chaos this Easter the worst ever is because you know what we've got the worst ever prime minister this country could ever ask for and for me he's just run true to form and i'll tell you this right i am really laughing at you people who voted for boris johnson right because you know <laughs> right? i knew that he was going to be this much of a disaster it was you know it was written it was it was written right? i ain't a psychic but i knew teachers right are demanding more money Right, because you know they're saying, well, you know something, yeah, we can't live on the money what you're giving us right now. We're going to food banks. There's bare teachers going up into food banks in this country right now. Right, the world was it the world's fifth largest economy, right, that has more food banks than McDonald's, and that's where the teachers are having to get their food from. Teachers who are supposed to be on quite a decent salary, right, can't afford to live in Great Britain. Not only are we living in a country yeah, where soon you won't be able to buy fish and chips, right, because it's too expensive to be, to be made in this country, right. You're gonna have to go to somewhere like the Savoy to have fish and chips, right. So you know because everything else is too expensive. So the teachers are like, you know what, we really need some more money. Or we're going to be getting ourselves out of the teaching, out of the teaching industry, and we're going to go and start driving for Uber because <laughs> we could probably make more money there, right? So do you see? Everything in this country is the worst. Even the teachers now are saying, you know something? Yeah, we're not even. It's not even going to be no strike. We're just all going to be leaving. We're going to be getting the fuck out of there, taking our textbooks right and our pencils right and getting the hell out of there. Right, you know, because most of them have got like a, a, a pencil, right, with a Liz Truss head on the top of it. <laughs> right. A machine operator, right, has been sent to prison for sending Angela Rayner vicious communications. A machine operator. A machine operator. And he's been sending her those vicious operations vicious communications because he believes that Angela Rayner is responsible for the death of the MP in Southend for calling the Tories scum or if you're in London scum a machine operator so a working class person uh, has picked out one of our most working class MPs to go after on behalf of the Tories because she calls them scum because they want to vote against disabled people, want to vote against feeding children, want to vote against unemployed people and want to vote, you know, basically want to vote against all the social issues in this country. So she calls them scum and he, a working class man, machine operator, goes after her in the most vicious way. I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, you just have to, you know, for, for yourself, I mean, you just can just fill in all the blanks for yourself because, I mean, this is just, just, you have to look at a person like that and just think, I don't know, you know, just like, it's a very, you know, the, I, you know, when I, when I listen to people, when I look at people like that, I just know to myself how smart 
the Tories really are and how stupid the working classes really are. Because, you know, the real Tories are just laughing at him. They're absolutely laughing at him, the real Tories are. Because, you know, the real Tories know that they can only be in power by convincing, you know, the, the poor and the working class that, you know, that you'll be better off under them. Even though, right, everything in your supermarket has just gone up in price. And, you know, that doesn't affect real Tories. Doesn't affect them. They're not affected by the, you know, by the, the cost of um, petrol and diesel. It's not affecting them. Right, you're real Tories. It's not affecting them. Right? And you know, and you, you, and all of all of your politicians, it's affecting none of them because remember, they all get like an allowance, a travel allowance, and all that. You know, an allowance for, and, a, and also an allowance for their um, for their energy costs. You know, they're probably getting an allowance for broadband. Right, so so they're not they're not affected by by none of this. So I just think it's just fantastic, right? The way how they can convince people who have nothing that they are better off voting for people who have everything. As if to say, people who have everything are going to say to people who have nothing, "Here, yeah, we're going to give you this. We're going to use, we're going to use some triple down economics." What we're going to do is we're going to we're going to level you up. We're going to level you up to us, to the same as us. That's what we're going to do. I mean, and you know, for, to believe that you've got to be a real doofus, an idiot, a fool, like a jester. That's what you've got to be. I mean, you've got to be mentally equipped, right, with the, probably the reading age, as most of the people who vote for the Tories of about eleven years old. You know, so if you can convince, you know, a machine operator that um, you're working on behalf of him, then, I mean, you can convince, well, actually, I, I have a bridge over the Thames that um, you may well be interested in. So if you hit me up after the show, I will give you all the details that you need. If you, and I will let you know exactly where to send the check, obviously, first of all, because I've got to make sure that that you're that you're genuine of course and the russians uh motto this weekend is you sank my battleship the ukrainians have sunk the russians a russian battleship yeah one of their one of their main characters from their black sea fleet right. so this is what you're talking about this this thing probably cost a few hundred million well, it would, in in rubles it would be, be billions, but it probably cost a few hundred million dollars, right? This this um this battleship, right? Because when you see this thing, I mean, you know, I don't like what they do, but I am very impressed by like by by um military by military hardware, right? But when you see this, and the Ukrainians, right, have basically you know, like that torpedo or or blown it up with like um with some homemade rockets or something like that. <laughs> so what? It's like they got, from what I heard, yeah, they had MacGyver, an elastic band, a bullet and a magnet. And that, right, was enough to sink one of the Russians, right? <laughs> one of their major, like battleships from their major fleet battleships. So, you know, good on the Ukrainians, you know, for um, <laughs> sinking, for sinking that. I think I think everyone was evacuated off of it, and the Russians are saying, well, that it that it caught fire, and say, so, yeah, that's right, it caught fire, it caught fire. But after the, after the Ukrainians fired a rocket at it, that's <laughs> when it caught fire. So so well done to the Ukrainians, and it seems staying in that region, there are schemes in Poland, right, and you've got a set of women that are called Women at the Wheel, right, who have had to go over to Poland to look out, right, for predators. And these will be Western predators. A lot of them would have come from over here because they, you know, because that's, you know, especially, you know, when you're talking about, when you talk about the people from the right wing, that's the only reason why they would be in somewhere like Ukraine to help. That's why they'd be there. They'd be there because they're sexual predators, right? You know, you have a lot of people from the left over there, they're, and they've gone over there to genuinely help. But when you're talking about the people from the right, because you know, none of them, none of them have got any compassion. 
They've got no compassion because if you had compassion, right, you couldn't vote for Boris Johnson and you couldn't vote for the Tories if you had any compassion. So none of them have got any compassion. Right? So any people from the right who find themselves, you find themselves in Ukraine, I guarantee you, right, that the only reason why they're there is for reasons of sexual predatory. And that's why you've had to have women set up a group called Women at the Wheel so that they could go and make sure that these people are safe. You know, so they've got to go and drive in cars with women. Uh, and that is a real Western problem. So a one-way ticket to Rwanda, if you're black or brown, there's a one-way ticket for your ass. You know, I, I just ask people the question. It's simple, right? Why is it, yeah, that I am seen as a second-class citizen to, to, to white people in this country. Why am I a second-class citizen? Why is it yeah, that after 500 years, you're still trying to dehumanise us? After 500 years, after all this time, you're still at it. Still, right? You know, it, it, it just uh, for me, I just find that this whole thing, yeah, really spiteful. It's, you know, it's an evil trade that Britain has been running you know it's more England sorry not Britain England has been running right for you know for just hundreds and hundreds of years now I've got to stand there and watch people who look like me being told you cannot come here there's no sanctuary here for you but if but people who look like you my Caucasian listeners right are told oh no you can come here right in fact we will put we will, you know, the government will give money to help you if you come here. They will give money so that, so that you will be okay. But for people who look like I do, they can go to a country, right, who is one of the one of the poorest countries in the world, has this has terrible human rights records, right? Doesn't have fresh running water for everybody in the country, right? You know, is a poor nation of people. Right? They have their own social problems as it is. Right? And we are telling black and brown people, you can have, the only thing you can get from Great Britain is a one-way ticket to there. Right? Or you can have a bullet, or you can take this bomb. And take that back to your family. It's a very, very sad place that we're in. Very, very sad place. So, Brexit, a government funded, designated to replace grants uh, due to be taken away after Brexit, has been criticised. Well, what was we expecting? Because it's, a, it's, it's, it's been basically been called an outrage. Because there's a difference, yeah, in... Or they're going to give them, they're going to give them a lot less than they would than they was getting from the EU after they told them that oh no we'll match that, but you know it's Boris Johnson in charge and just ask Jennifer R. Curie right, if Boris Johnson ever tells the truth. In fact, ask Boris Johnson's missus that he's living with now if Boris Johnson ever tells the truth because she probably knows she 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 probably knows that she's only temporary and she has to keep his house on a really tight leash. So you know so it's. You know, this is happening to all the regions, right, who used to get grants from the EU. And now, you know, the grants from the government is a lot less than they would have been getting from the EU. But they was told all these things. And people said, we know what we're voting for. We're a bunch of racist, xenophobic fools. And if, right, you call us stupid, then we'll vote even more racist and put the country into, into more problems. Liverpool used to get 52 million pounds a year from the EU, and the government have just offered them 30 million less. But you know, as I said, as I said on minutes ago, this is exactly what we were saying. We were saying, you know, they're not gonna match. They're not going to match, and you know the fishermen, and you know the farmers, you know, and we're going to be out of you know Lagarde, or we're going to be out of Horizon. I said, no, we're not. None of these things are going to happen. It's all Project Fair. Well, how is Project Fair going for you right now? I know I'm well over my time. 
but I still want to ask the question, how is Project FAIR going for you now? Or is that, should we call it, Project Right Now? This country is in dire straits. Johnson has done more than a hundred years worth of damage and that is all down to you people who voted right, to shoot yourself in both feet and both hands because you're a bunch of racist, foolish idiots. This is by any means necessary. I'm well over my time. I'm the MC John Ribs. It was really nice to speak to you guys. Comments below.